How you doing, people? Today we're going to take a quick look at Gran Turismo. This was directed by Neil Blomkamp and stars Archie Mattaqui, David Harbour, and Orlando Bloom. Mattaqui plays Jan Mardenbro, a Gran Turismo superfan who would very much like to race cars for real one day. And one day he gets that opportunity when Nissan announces the GT Academy, where they will take the best sim racers from all over the world and try to turn them into real racers. And against all odds, he wins and goes on to be a professional race car driver. I honestly did not find this one to be all that great, through no fault of the cast, mind you. I don't know if I've seen Mattaqui before, but I thought he was pretty good as Yan. He really felt like someone you would want to root for. Bloom turns in a solid performance as the marketing executive who creates the GT Academy. Harbour plays a former race car driver who becomes Yan's mentor, and of course he's good in pretty much everything he does, though I do have some issues with his character. It also features Jimon Hansu as Yan's father, and I have some issues with that character as well, but again, He's good in everything he does, and it is a shame he is not in better stuff. The racing scenes are pretty well done, and they featured the real Jan Martinbro as basically his own stunt double, which I thought was kind of cool. It's fast, it's exciting, it is scary at times as well. And they overlay some PlayStation effects here and there, which you would think would be kind of hokey, but somehow they made it work. It's easily the best part of the movie. It's just a shame that the rest of it was not as good. I personally found this to be tropey as hell, almost to the point of cringe. Ansu is playing the same kind of dad you've seen a million times before who wishes his son would get away from those silly dreams and focus on a more sensible career. And of course he has an older brother who is much more accomplished than he is, at least at first, and he's clearly the favorite child. I don't know if this represents their actual family dynamic at all, but that's how it's portrayed in the movie. And Harbour's character is the old guy who stopped evolving 40 years ago, which is weird because he's not even 50. He still listens to Black Sabbath on cassette tapes on his Walkman because he's that guy. And there's even a line where he says, what do you call this video game thing? What, a console? I don't know what that is because I'm old. And I'm not sure how old the character is supposed to be, but Harbour is only two years older than the Atari 2600. You know what a game console is, shut the fuck up. Harbour's entire character just felt very phony to me. It was either created by an AI or by someone who has never met a Gen Xer. And while this movie is based on a true story and had some input from the real Martin Bro, they changed a lot. Dan Harbour's character, Jack Salter, does not exist in real life, as if that wasn't obvious. No one like that exists in real life. Supposedly, he might be loosely based on a couple of different mentors that Yan had in his life, but he's a caricature. And to his credit, Harbour does everything he can to make that character work, and he does actually have some good moments. The character's faults are not his, it's just lazy writing. Bloom's character, Danny Moore, also does not actually exist, although he is supposed to be based on Darren Cox, who actually founded the GT Academy. The movie makes it look like Yan participated in the first ever GT Academy, which is not true. He was in the third. They also made it look like he barely squeaked out a victory in the final Academy race to earn the contract with Nissan. In reality, he won by like eight seconds. It wasn't even close. But where it really gets dumb is the part of the movie that covers Jan's crash at Nürburgring, which accidentally killed a spectator. And the way they portray the crash in the movie is more or less how it went down. Jan's car caught air and basically went vertical before flipping over several times and unfortunately taking out a spectator and injuring several others. But the way it's presented in the movie chronologically is complete horseshit. It's presented as a major blow to Yan's career, and he almost wants to quit racing entirely, but over time he gets the motivation to return to racing and ends up getting on the podium at the 24 Hours of Le Mans. But in reality, Le Mans was like two years before the crash. Those two events had nothing to do with each other at all. I do understand Martin Bro's argument that the crash should have been included in the movie, and not including it as part of his story would have been a disservice. I get that. I agree with that. But I found the way they included it was pretty damn tasteless. I do understand this is not a documentary and they're going to change some events here and there for dramatic purposes, but Jesus, they went overboard. I do not recommend spending the money to see this in a theater. Not worth it. If you are actually curious about Yan's story, you're probably better off just reading about it because then you'll get the real story. If you're at all curious about the movie, just wait for it to hit streaming. And that's all I have to say about Gran Turismo. Till next time. Take care.